Hello, and welcome to Gadget at thetechstop.net, where it's time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Robert Balasser of the Society of Jesus, the California province of the Jesuits, and we're here in the Center for Apostolic Technology in San Jose, California. Now, first, I want to thank everyone who wrote messages or left comments on our YouTube page telling us that we needed to work on our lighting and our audio. We know this. We're trying. We're hoping we have a bead on the, on the lighting and what it needs to be, and and now we're working on audio, trying to get it perfected. Speaking of audio, you may be wondering why it looks like I'm surrounded by a bunch of audio stuff. Well, quite simply, this episode is dedicated to sound. That's right, sound. Not just any sound, but digital sound. Digitally recorded sound. Digitally recorded portable audio. Now, in front of me, you have all the pieces you need for a, a pretty decent portable rig. You've got microphones, in this case, two dynamic microphones, pretty much indestructible, and you need two so that you can set them at uh, 90 degrees to one another and be able to get a good audio uh, stereo field. Of course, with the microphones, you need microphone stands so you can position them where you need them. Then you also need something like this, which is a USB audio mixing board. This one is from Tascam. It actually has pretty decent audio, and uh, it has a lot of features for mixing your sound up and down. <clears throat> Of course, with that, you're going to need a laptop in order to record your stereo or four-track sound and all the cables that would be associated with it, everything from microphone cables to power bricks, USB extensions. Now, this is a very good setup. In fact, this is incredibly flexible. This will go anywhere you need it to go, record anything you need it to record, and it will do it at a, a pretty decent price. But it's not the simplest. For that, you can either go with something like this, or you can get something like this. This is the Zoom H4 from Samson. It's a portable media studio, and just like the name implies, it's designed to take the functions of all the gear that I had laid out on this table and compact it down into one tiny little man-portable unit. Now, it includes everything from stereo microphones to digital encoding to MP3 encoding, but it's not a toy even though it may look like one. And just to prove it, we're going to take you on a quick tour of what the H4 can do. The unit is a well-designed package that mixes function with intuitive controls. The H4 includes a cradle into which the unit can be locked and secured with two Velcro straps. At 7 inches long, 4 inches wide, and 1.5 and inch deep, the H4 fits comfortably into the palm of your hand. Along the left front of the unit are a series of buttons that allow you to quickly select between four different audio sampling modes, 96, 48, 44.1 kHz, and MP3 recording. The face of the unit is completed with a directional keypad, recording button, status light, and LCD display. The right side of the H4 has a well-designed click wheel for menu navigation, as well as three triple position switches that allow you to select the desired gain on the internal microphones as well as the external ports. The left side of the H4 contains the USB port, power switch, headphone volume control, headphone port, and line out port. The bottom of the unit has two balanced XLR ports for connecting external microphones, mixers, preamps, or guitars, as well as the power connector. A neat feature of the H4 is that it can provide 48 volt phantom power, meaning that the XLR connectors can be used with higher end microphones. The top of the H4 underneath a windsock sports two condenser microphones. The microphones are angled at 90 degrees from each other in order to provide high quality stereo field recording. And the top of the H4 also has a compartment that hides the two AA batteries that enable portable use of the H4, as well as an SD slot with support for up to two gigabyte memory cards. Using the H4 is quite easy. It takes about 7 seconds to power the unit from dead start and boot into the operating system. Once the OS is loaded, the LCD screen will tell you the name of the file it will record, as well as the total remaining time left on the memory card. Recording is as simple as selecting the recording mode that you desire, in this case I've selected MP3, and then pressing the record button. The first time you press the record button, the LCD will display live sound levels from the internal microphone or external ports so that you can select the appropriate gain to keep your sound levels from distorting. Pushing the record button again will start the recording. The re record button will then turn a solid red and the memory access light begins to flash. 
Pressing the record button a third time will stop the recording and close off the file. Pushing the menu button on the face of the H4 will give you a number of options that you can navigate using the click wheel. The file menu allows you to rename, delete, or resize files already recorded, something that will be handy with the recorders in the field. The mode select menu lets you switch the unit between stereo recording and 4-track recording. When you are in 4-track mode, you will use the two internal microphones as well as the two external ports. Selecting the recording format menu allows you to customize your sampling rates, and if you choose MP3 recording, you can also set the maximum bit rate. The USB menu is interesting because it lets you connect the H4 to your desktop in one of two ways. In connect to PC mode, the SD card will appear on your desktop as a removable storage drive. In audio I.O. mode, the H4 will act as a USB stereo microphone. That's a very handy feature for those who do computer editing of audio or video dubbing. Pushing the directional key down will give you access to the input menu. Here you can select everything from mic input to audio levels. You can also enable an audio monitor through the headphone port, enable auto gain for the microphones, select a particular external mic profile, toggle compression limiting, and turn on or off phantom power. The best thing about the H4 is that a novice can literally be recording high quality audio in two steps, while an experienced sound engineer can fully customize the recording options as needed. So a few final thoughts on the Zoom H4. For what it is, a portable media studio, it's incredibly competent. It's not going to replace a dedicated studio or high-end digital recording equipment, but the portability combined with the ability to record in WAV or MP3 formats, to do limited inbox mixing, to do four-track recording and have a built-in stereo microphone sets it apart from any other device in its class. In fact, I'd have to say that this is the best recording device for this price, about $200 US, and that there's nothing that even comes close to matching the capabilities. Now, our only downside was the recording time on battery, which by our test lasted about three hours. That's not a real limitation unless you're doing incredibly long field recordings where you have no access to AC power or to a change of batteries, but for most of us, that's going to be just fine. Who is this for? For the audio enthusiast, for someone looking to record a podcast, or just someone who wants to do portable field recordings. The addition of the stereo microphones in addition to the XLR inputs means that it's a very competent device for those who want to take it on the go and maybe do some recordings of bands or plays or musicals. Pretty much anything that has to do with audio will be well suited to the H4. Now that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you'd like to know more about the H4 or other Samsung technologies, look at the full review at www.thetechstop.net and click on the Gadget tab. If you'd like to email us, you can also send us email at gadget at thetechstop.net and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks again for watching, and remember, there's no Uber Geek without you. Take care.